In this video, I'm going to go over just some of the basic concepts about how to uh, evaluate limits for a variety of different types. So remember that it's in a, evaluating a limit, you're going to see a problem that tells you the limit of some function as x approaches some number, let's say a. So you read this as the limit as x approaches a of f of x. So the first strategy for evaluating a limit like this is we're going to try direct substitution. And that means we could just plug in a for x. This is true if, so this is only true if f of x is continuous and f of a exists in the first place. So if you try to plug in the number for x, but it gives you, you know, some sort of indeterminate form, something weird goes on, then that's not the answer. You can't just do that. Also, you can't do that in the case where it's not continuous, like if it's, not a, if it's a, a piecewise function. So let me give you a quick example. Let's say we had the piecewise function. So we had the function x for all x not equal to 0. And at x equals 0, we have the point 5. So this could be a piecewise function you're given here. And we want to find the limit as x goes to 0. We can't just plug in x goes to 0 in this case, because that would give us 5, and that's not correct. Because in addition to being able to use this rule, it's important to note that whenever you're trying to solve a limit, you're really doing the limit from the left and from the right. You're doing the one-sided limits, and they have to be the same. So to find out the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x here, we know that that will only exist if the limit as x approaches 0 from the left equals the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. If both of those are equal, then this limit will exist and it will be equal to those. So remember, having a negative sign, like as an exponent means from the left, this means from the right. So going back to this example, if we want to approach 0 from the left, that means we're using numbers that are not quite 0, but they're getting there from the left. Well, if we're using numbers that aren't 0, we have to use this function, not this one. Or, I'm sorry, this piece of the function. Same thing with 0 from the right. If we're using very small numbers that are positive, we're getting close to 0 from the right, but not exactly 0. Again, we have to use this piece, because that's where x is not equal to 0. And 0 minus and 0 plus from the left and from the right are not equal to 0. So at that point, if we're using this piece right here, then we can use direct substitution. Because if we try to plug in 0 to these, we just get 0, and that, that works out. So in this case, this is 0. This is 0. So if the limit from the left and from the right are 0, then this limit exists, and it is 0 not 5. So that's a pretty important thing to keep in mind there. So let's talk about real quick what type of indeterminate forms you can get. Let's say we wanted to do the limit <clears throat> as x approaches 1 of that function there. So let's do what we were talking about here. Let's just try direct substitution. Let's plug in 1 for x. If you plug in 1 for x, you get 0 over 0. So that is an indeterminate form, and that means that you don't know anything about what that limit is. So the only way that you can solve this is to simplify this in some fashion. In this case, this one's pretty easy to simplify. Because your denominator factors, because it's the difference of two squares, you can see there the x minus 1's cancel out and you're left with 1 over x plus 1. In this form, now we can use direct substitution. We can plug in 1, and we get 
one half. So even though the limit was indeterminate at first, you can simplify it uh, and then get your answer that way. So I want to point out that that's different from the following situation. Let's say we wanted to do the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x. Now, if we plug in 0, we're dividing by 0, which is some is undefined. However, that is not the same thing as a limit being indeterminate. Indeterminate means you have 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, something that doesn't make any sense. You can simplify in some way. This function here cannot be simplified, and our denominator is 0, but our numerator is not. So whenever you have the denominator being 0, but the numerator is not 0, your answer is going to be some type of infinity, either positive or negative infinity. So to figure this out, we need to do the limit as x approaches 0 from the, left, from the right, and the limit as x approaches 0 from the left. So conceptually, you can think of this as 1 divided by very, 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 very small positive numbers. As that number gets smaller and smaller and smaller, if you're doing 1 divided by a really small number, your number is just getting larger and larger and larger. So as you go to 0, that number is approaching infinity. Similarly here, now we have really, really small negative numbers. We're getting close to 0 from the negative side. Again, you're dividing by a very small number, so the number gets really large. However, they, these would be negative, so we get negative infinity. From the right, we had infinity. From the left, we had negative infinity. Therefore, this limit does not exist because the left and the right are the same. So you would say that your original limit does not exist. So it's important to note that infinity, negative infinity, and does not exist are all very different things. If you had a, uh, a function such that from the right and from the left they were both infinity, then the limit would exist and it would be infinity. So does not exist is reserved for when the limits from the right and the left uh, do not exist. So those are some of your basic tactics for evaluating limits and anything else past these will probably be explained uh, in the problem videos that use them.